Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the new update from Universe Sandbox Square, the tool that I usually use to help us visualize the universe, space and everything in it. And this update is actually really big and I'm really excited about it. It introduces galaxies like we've never seen before. So this update has been in the making for a few years now, a lot of people have been asking for it including myself and um, it seems that it was a lot more difficult than we imagined. In the blog post from Universe Sandbox, they actually uh, kind of explained what had to be removed for this to work. And basically the sacrifice here was quite substantial scientifically, but visually it still looks great. Essentially, they removed all of the dark matter that used to be here. If you look at some of my older videos, you'll see that Universe Sandbox Square used to have these red dots that represented dark matter. And it was actually a relatively realistic way of uh, showing us how the galaxy stays together, because that's essentially how dark matter we think works. But for this particular update, the main developers of Universe Sandbox decided to go the other way, the visual way. So here, if you look at the galaxy, you'll notice something that looks really pretty, but the actual stars don't rotate as fast as they should, especially on the outskirts. And that's because these galaxies now follow the so-called orbital model, where everything kind of behaves as if it was a planet around a typical star, in this case, the supermassive black hole or the center of the galaxy. So normally, in real world, these stars here on the outskirts would actually be moving a lot faster and this is why we believe dark matter exists. But nevertheless, for the sakes of simulation and making this look beautiful and also making it work most importantly, they removed this, at least for now, and I actually like this. This is kind of crazy. Uh, it looks absolutely amazing and most importantly, now we have these options to play around with the galaxies, such as, for example, um, changing the type of a galaxy. This is why I'm calling this now the best tool to learn about galaxies because you can just change the galaxy to a regular galaxy just to see what it looks like or change it to let's say an elliptical E3 type and then maybe compare it to an elliptical E5 type and try to figure out what's different. The main difference of course being the actual eccentricity of the ellipse. Lastly you can go through various spiral galaxies and you can even create your own spiral galaxy with as many arms as you want which is really what makes this one of the best galactic simulations now. I can basically create anything I want. Here is a galaxy with like six arms and all of these arms are going to be uh, perfectly aligned and look absolutely uh, incredible. And if your computer is powerful enough and you want to make this even more beautiful, you can then uh, change the number of uh, nebula presented here to make the galaxy even more remarkable and even more realistic. And this is kind of mind blowing to be honest. Now, just for fun, I placed the sun somewhere in here and notice how even the inside of this galaxy looks a lot more realistic. There are a lot more different stars here. You'll notice there's um, definitely a lot more variety. Uh, there are blue stars, there are these uh, darker orange stars, these are representing uh, red giants and so on. And depending on the type of the galaxy you create, it will look different. And you can even change the age of the galaxy by modifying various settings here. So for example, let's say I wanted to create a really ancient and somewhat diffuse elliptical galaxy that's like, I don't know, 12 billion years old. So here we can make it a little bit more spread out. Uh, and lastly here, we can also modify both the size or the mass of the galaxy to the way that you want to make it. And then if you actually want to change its black hole, you can do that as well, creating a much more massive black hole to uh, what it was originally. So there's a lot of new really cool settings here, there's definitely a lot of things to play around with, but most importantly, this now is definitely the best, most educational tool to learn about galaxies, different shapes of galaxies, different types of galaxies, and how galaxies evolve. Um, here there's even a function for uh, nebula evolution, so in other words, these nebula will actually change with time if you wait long enough. Now, it's kind of difficult to see it here, but basically what they're going to do is change in color. And this is kind of mind blowing as well. So here, if I click on a nebula, you'll notice they have age, but they also have the average start temperature right here, which determines their overall color. And this can be changed. And I believe this does change with time. I might be wrong about this, but that's kind of the main purpose of this function. So we can technically turn this into different looking object by um, adjusting these sliders. So here it's kind of difficult to see, but uh, it's meant to be not as visible, but 
So right now it's a lot more red because the stars here are much cooler, but if I change this to a hotter temperature, it will actually become a little bit more blue looking, or I guess white looking, and you can even make it hotter than this. And lastly, you can also modify how much gas or how much dust it has. So right now it has a lot of gas, but I can change this to have much higher dust content, thus creating this kind of a dust field that will block, like for example, stars or black hole in the middle and so on. So there's a lot of new features here that are just remarkable. And most importantly, all of these simulations now run pretty fast. And that's mostly because they removed all of the dark matter that uh, was actually causing a lot of problems. Simply because for every single um, chunk of dark matter, there had to be a lot of calculations related to gravity. And so that was sort of the main reasoning behind removing dark matter. It was just not really adding to the visual simulation as much as it could, and it was not possible to create realistic galaxies because of this. And so the developers decided to kind of forego this for now. Dark matter will come back in the future, but not for now. For now though, I personally love these new changes. It makes for an absolutely incredible visual simulation. And most importantly, it creates uh, an opportunity to now play around with galaxies. So for example, now you can simulate a much more realistic collision between the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxy with a lot more things involved here, or even better, they actually now have a simulation called Our Local Group that um, shows you visually in three dimensions where everything is located in regards to the Milky Way that's in the center right there. It shows you some of the major uh, dwarf galaxies, some of the major partners of our own galaxy, and here, um, so these uh, rings that you see, that's actually just the trails from the nebula. We can remove that. And now you can sort of see where everything is. So there's a Sagittarius dwarf a spheroid galaxy right there. There's a few more around us. Uh, we also have some of the other major galaxies like Small Magellanic Cloud and the Large Magellanic Cloud. And most importantly, if you zoom out, you'll see the uh, Andromeda galaxy and the Triangulum galaxy, which are the biggest uh, neighbors that we have. And technically you could simulate this to have a very realistic collision between everything. Now, um, last time I tried this, it didn't go well for other galaxies. They kind of started moving in the wrong directions, but uh, you could technically make this a very realistic simulation. And so let's see what happens here if we just accelerate time a little bit to make them move around and create some sort of a galactic disaster. So I have a feeling it's not going to go well for us because I noticed that uh, Andromeda is already moving the wrong way. But let's see, let's see what happens. I'm kind of curious. It, it does seem to not always be super realistic and that's probably because the actual dark matter is not here, uh, but it's still fun to try. Most importantly, this is a really, really good visual map for how the local group looks. And I think this is probably the most realistic representation of it I've seen in a while. So um, actually, here we go. There is the Andromeda. There is the Triangulum Galaxy that's going to collide with Andromeda. And looks like the Andromeda Galaxy and the um, remains of the Milky Way Galaxy are slowly coming together as they should in real life. Okay, never mind. I think I accidentally made my galaxy fall apart because I ran the simulation too fast. But anyway, this is definitely a better and much more improved version of the simulation, and it allows you to play around with a lot more things related to galaxies. A lot of these galaxies have also been added to the database, so you can kind of add them to your simulation now, play around with them, and make them look beautiful, realistic, and most importantly, see what happens if you add something else to that particular galaxy you're interested in. So in one of the future videos, we're actually going to explore this a little bit more because I would like to play around and see what happens if you add something to one of the most famous galaxies out there. Until then though, that's really it. It's definitely a huge improvement and I'm actually excited to try these new features and play around with the galactic creation and destruction using Universe Sandbox. Anyway, on this note, thank you for watching. Hopefully you'll subscribe to this channel if you still haven't and potentially share this video with someone who loves learning about space through simulations and video games. And also, um, I'm planning to actually hold a bit of a giveaway of the Universe Sandbox. I still have, I think, maybe 10 or so copies left, possibly even more. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to randomly um, give out the keys to people on Twitter and it will most likely be first come, first serve based on the a space or science question I ask or just based on you following me on Twitter. 
And the main purpose for this is to actually um, help you guys get a copy of this simulation, uh, mostly because I think it's a brilliant learning tool, but also because my Twitter account is really tiny and other space YouTubers are all laughing at my super tiny Twitter account. Anyway, on that note, come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.